Suppose that this is the earth. It's the earth. And suppose that we have a satellite. Okay, so this is not a little yellow ball, this is a, a serious satellite, a very serious one. Um, now, now and and this satellite, this satellite goes around the Earth in an orbit. Okay, goes around this way. Now I'm going to I'm going to look at a special kind of satellite, and there are many kinds of satellite. Now this special kind of satellite that I'm going to look at, it goes around the Earth in a very special way. Now, we know that the Earth rotates. Suppose that that's the North Pole and we are looking down from, from the top of the North Pole. Then the Earth, the Earth rotates this way. Okay, the Earth rotates this way. Um, now, I'm going to look at this type of satellite which rotates around the Earth with the same angular velocity as the Earth. Now, what does that mean? You think about it. That means that if the Earth rotates by uh, a certain certain angle, like if the Earth rotates by 90 degrees from here to here, so the satellite rotates by 90 degrees from there to there. So now this is very interesting because think about a certain point on Earth. Let's say at, at a certain time, the satellite is directly above that point. Okay, let's say uh, maybe that's London. Okay, let's say London. No, that's not a good example. It has to be on the equator. Right, let's say this is a city in the equator. Let's say Singapore, very close to the equator. Let's say that's Singapore. And let's say we have a satellite directly above Singapore, almost. Now, when the Earth rotates by 90 degrees, so 90 degrees, let's say that's about uh, half a day, six hours or so. In six hours, the Earth rotates by 90 degrees. So the satellite would also rotate by 90 degrees to here. So when Singapore comes here, the satellite comes there. Both goes by 90 degrees. Now, you can see now it's quite clearly that the satellite stays on top of Singapore. Now this type of satellite is very useful for communication because uh, as as it, satellites are, it, that are used for communication would receive say radio signals from other satellites spread around uh, the skies and it can then beam down the the, the radio data uh, into the countries uh, below it. So that's how it works. Now there is a name for this kind of satellite. Let me write this down. It's called a geostationary satellite. Okay. So the special thing about this type of satellite is that it always stays on top of the Earth. And in terms of uh, say things like the time, it means that the we know how long it takes for the Earth to uh, rotate once about its axis. It, it takes 24 hours, exactly one day. So that means that the satellite will also go one round in its orbit in exactly 24 hours. Okay, so that's a dual stationary orbit. Now, what do I want to do? Right, what I want to do is this. I want to, I want to find, I want to find the distance of a geostationary orbit from the center of the Earth. I want to find the radius of a geostationary orbit. So I'm going to try to do that. And in order to do this, um, I need to think about the physics of the circular motion. So we know about we know that for for a uh, object, an object to go around in a circle with uh, say a uniform with a constant speed we need a force we need a force 
towards the center of the circle in order to keep it in this circular motion. That force is called the centripetal force. So centripetal force. Centripetal force. Now, and then we have to think, what well, alright for say for this particular example, where might such a force come from? And the obvious place to look is Earth, which is at the center, since, since the force is directed to it. And Earth is a big mass and it will attract the satellite. Okay, and that's that's why the satellite has weight. So therefore, that's the only only force we can see in this example. Unless there's a string that ties the satellite to the Earth, which there probably isn't. Okay, so let's say, okay, let's say this force comes from the gravitational attraction of the Earth. So that's what we have. So gravitational, gravitational force. So since this is the only force, therefore a centripetal force must just come from that alone. And therefore, they must be equal. Okay, otherwise it won't work. Otherwise, this satellite won't go round in in the circle. So, given this relation, in order to find the time, uh, find the radius. Now, let let me write down the question, just to be, just so we know where where we are going. So, um, the question is, what is the radius of a geostationary satellite that's the question and, and it's this R here that we want to find so now that we, we understand the physics of the, of the problem, we can use the equations that we know and see if that can help us to find R. Now the equation for the centripetal force is M let's see, is M omega squared R. Right, where omega is the angular angular velocity of the satellite r is the radius m is, right m in this case is the is the mass of the satellite okay so this is equal to the gravitational force which is given by newton's law of gravitation so where uh, the big m is the mass of earth okay so it is R that we want, and we see R in these equations. So let us try and um, solve for R. And then we also need to see what, what are the values that we need to put in afterwards. I'll make R the subject. I'll multiply both sides by R squared to bring R squared here over to the other side. So on the left, I have R cubed. And also notice that I have little m, the mass of the satellite on both sides. So I can divide this out from both sides. And I would... Um, okay, let, let me just write out, write out what I have first. So I have gm here. Okay. And I have omega squared here. Now, omega, if... Um, in this case, we need to find omega. Omega, we have seen from the previous session that we can write down omega as 2 pi divided by the period of revolution. Okay, 2 pi meaning the full, full uh, circle, the angle for the full circle in radians, and t, the time taken for the satellite to go around one full circle. So therefore it's 2 pi over the period, in terms of the period. So, and it's convenient in this case because we know the time for, for one period. It's just one day, 24 hours. So therefore I, it is, 
Therefore, I could I could write this in terms of two pi over t because then I know what value of t I can use afterwards. Okay, so let me write this out directly. Okay, so now let me press on. Um, okay, I want to make r cube the subject, right? So let me move all the rest over to the other side. So on this side, I have gm um, t squared coming over here to the top and square of 2 pi coming here to the bottom. So that's 4 pi squared. So I already know that t is 24 hours. Uh, big M is the mass of the Earth and big G acceleration, uh, the, the, not acceleration, big G is the gravitational constant. So these are what I need. So let me let me write these down. Okay, so G G is six point six seven six point six seven times ten to the minus four SI units. Um I need the mass I need the mass of the earth. That's mass is equal to 5.97 times 10 to the 24 kilogram. It's a huge mass. And we also need the time. Uh, now time, okay, it's 24 hours, but this formula is based on SI units, so I do need to convert 24 hours to seconds okay so let me start 24 hours in minutes would be times 60 and to get in seconds times another 60 so that's one day in seconds okay so i have all i need all the numbers i need to calculate this formula so i can now Use my calculator, calculate an answer for this, and then I can take the cube root of that to find R. So I have done that. I've done that, and my answer is four point two two times ten to the power of seven meters. Okay, so that's the answer. Now it looks like a huge number, and huge num numbers are uh, impressive, but uh, they are not very meaningful unless we have something to compare with. Now in this case, I would like to compare it with, say, the radius of the Earth. Now the radius of the Earth, uh, I'll call that R e. The radius of the Earth is is six three eight zero kilometers. Okay. That's the radius of the Earth. So if I divide this by the radius of the Earth, okay, which I, I, I did, I just try it out and see what I get. This is what I get. I get 6.62 times of the radius of the Earth. So in other words, the radius of this geostationary satellite is 6.62 nearly seven times right nearly seven times the radius of the earth so that is a long distance away 